the, the session is now open for uh, discussion. Any question from, from the audience? <coughs> I really liked your first presentation because it showed very well how edema, cystoid edema, can bring in what we could say closing down the deep capillary net, but recovering after you recovered with edema to normal stage. And I, I think this is a very good example how edema can push these vessels, these deep vessels, close them down temporarily without consequences. <coughs> and that, that, I think, is something you probably can follow in these patients and see how much of these, is, these uh, vessels can reopen again uh, when the, the, the pressure from the neighboring uh, tissue is not there anymore. But yes. I, I think it's a yeah. very interesting uh, I, I think that uh, inflammatory cystoid macular edema may present in, uh, th there's a spectrum of uh, cystoid macular edema. Some cases are like cystoid macular edema and diabetic retinopathy. Right. Maybe uh, uh, after resolution of cystoid space, there is no re recovery of uh, the normal. And in some cases, it, um, it may be like uh, what we see in postoperative cystoid macular edema. I don't know. Maybe yeah. some it depends on uh, the severity, the chronicity, and uh, some other features. Uh. You know, what you've shown has been pr proposed 20 years ago to happen in diabetic macular edema. And that's an interesting uh, correlation. That may happen also in, in diabetic patients. Thank you. Yeah. I'd like to... Please. Uh, I'd like to ask Olga, mm -hmm. and thank you for a beautiful image. And you showed one case who had multiple sub-RPE elevation materials, and at the relapse, together with choroidal thickening, the number of sub-RPE materials also increased. I know a choroidal granuloma is often seen in Halada disease, mm -hmm. but uh, is uh, such uh, sub RP deposits are also popular, commonly commonly seen in Harada? I could understand the last the last uh, sentence. Yeah. Sorry. Are uh, uh, such sub RP RP retinal pigment epithelium yes. deposits are often seen in Harada? Because I, I I don't see it so often. So but often the the detachments the the yeah, multiple. No. Uh, not Can retinal detachment under the RPE. RPE elevation yes. is not yes. common in uh, the, the, the cage. Yes. Yeah, yes. Well, yeah. It's, it, yes, it's common when the um, inflammation is acute. Yeah, it's, it's not a, so common in chronic. Uh -huh. But in that it's, case, uh -huh. because it was so uh, inflammated, the choroid, because it's not so common to have a very thick choroid when it's not acute, no? The acute phase is, has thicker choroid, and the thicker choroid makes the undulations of the um, epithelium, the pigment epithelium, but in chronic, it's not so often. But it was, it was because the, the choroid was very thick. So hmm. in very severely inflamed eyes, it's mm. possible. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I couldn't understand. <laughs> I agree that in Irvine gas syndrome and in some uveitic forms of CME, the deep plex is still intact. And one way you can kind of infer that is once the edema goes away, if the retinal architecture looks normal, generally they have a, a, a normal uh, deep plexus. In diabetics, vein occlusions, and other forms of retinal vascular CME, there often is edema, you get rid of the edema, and the retinal deep plexus doesn't come back. And they often have a thinner retina with a loss of laminations in that area. And when they get edema, it comes back exactly in that same area. So I think there is a difference in uveitic versus retinal vascular CME. Yes, I agree with you. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to try to make a categorical statement. And Professor Drexler, please correct me if I'm wrong. The statement is that there can be no white lesion without it having a shielding effect. So optical scatter must produce a loss of uh, signal and therefore a shadow, meaning that it will be difficult to image whatever is behind it, such as the choreo capillaries. And um, OCT is wonderful because it is only sensitive to ballistically backscattered light, one 
a scattering uh, event and no more than that. And uh, in, in the beautiful cases that uh, you showed of uh, placoid uh, persistent maculopathy A and AMN, um, I, my position is, my, my qualified guess, uh, I'd like to think, is that the, there is a shielding effect, whether it accounts for all the loss or diminution of uh, visibility of the capillaries on OCTA, I don't know, and it may be impossible to, to, to find out of that. But um, uh, this is, when you look at the OCT in uh, the cases of, uh, from Tunisia of um, mutes, the, the, the choroid remained visible during the attack and then it, but it came back slightly more visible. So it was as though the transparency of uh, the outer retina increased with the recovery of mutes. Um, so I'm just asking you to uh, go against me uh, if you think I'm wrong but, uh, or have better arguments. Thank you, thank you for, uh, I, I think that there is a, a controversy regarding the interpretation of uh, a hypo and dark area on, uh, in the choroid, in placoid uh, chorioretinopathy, is it uh, a, a true ischemia or hypoperfusion or mm. uh, masking or shadowing effect? Uh, in mutes, we don't have uh, a lot of visible material, there's just a few uh, white dots. And I think that the most important uh, uh, finding against uh, a masking effect in at least one of my cases is the presence, the visibility of uh, major large choroidal vessels on ICG and geography. If, if you have a hypofluorescent area of hypofluor geographic pattern, this is very important, this is very suggestive of ischemia. You have a geographic uh, area of uh, hypofluorescence and you can see the large choroidal vessels on ICG and geography. You don't have uh, uh, attenuation on, on swept source OCT, and we don't have, uh, uh, you, you have also a, a, a B scan uh, NGO can also exclude the shadowing effect. So it is probably uh, ischemia. So we cannot, uh, we cannot exclude uh, some masking effect in addition to hypoperfusion. And it is the, the same problem with uh, IP, MPPE, and with other conditions. But in mutes, uh, it is unlikely that uh, this large area of hypofluorescence uh, be, be caused be due to uh, a, a, a material masking or attenuating the, uh, the signal in the choriocapillaries. Thank you. Yes, but, but anyway, I think we agree that it's a useful... Uh, it's a useful uh, diagnostic bio biomarker, however we interpret it anyway. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But, but I think in general these, these dark areas in the choreocapillaries is, is not really probably ischemia. Probably is a slow flow. Probably secondary to inflammation. Probably there is a slow flow. That is the reason that uh, is, 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 the, is recovery, the, 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 this, this, this lesion in the, in the OCTA. Um, probably the, the cases that you show in, with mutes, probably the first case is, is, is not a typical mutes with, yeah. with tuberculosis. That is the reason that the, the choriocapillaries was, was darker. The other, in, in our experience within the, the OCTA, the emphas OCT, you can localize the, the primary site of the inflammation. Probably in MUSE, in our experience, the primary uh, the inflammation is the photoreceptor, the photoreceptor layer and not the choriocapillaries. The difference with placoid, for example, in the placoid, the choriocapillaries is the primary inflammation is in the choriocapillaries, probably, probably. Yes, but I, I think that this, these three cases um, definitely shows, um, show uh, uh, involvement of the, chor of the choroid. Yes. And uh, the, uh, the first case, I, I, I agree that this is atypical for mutes to have hypofluorescence, uh, hypointense area on, on OCT and geography. 
and in, it is atypical for mutes to have hypofluorescence mm -hmm. area in early phases of ICG and geography mm -hmm. because the, uh, the hypofluorescent area on ICG and geography uh, are typically in the late phases on ICG and geography. So I think that we have sometimes typical cases mm -hmm. uh, with, without, uh, without abnormal OCT and geography uh, findings and uh, sometimes uh, abnormal finding on fluorescent and geography, ICG and, uh, and OCT and geography. So I think that uh, the, the discussion remains open uh, about the, the primary uh, site, the primary site of the disease. Is it choreocapillaris or photoreceptors? <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to briefly uh, comment on, on Dr. Larson's uh, comment. In principle, you're right, but um, um, at longer wavelengths, we should be less sensitive to scattering because it goes with, uh, uh, with the fourth power of the, of the wavelength. In dermatology, with 1360, we can image through scar. So I don't know if the scar in the skin is the same as the scars we're talking about here because I'm not an MD, but in principle, 1060 should be less sensitive and you should have a very strong reflection as a shadowing effect. When you, when, for example, the, the RPE is very absorbing, very scattering, and in geographic atrophy at 800, you see that there is this curtain opening where the geographic atrophy is because the, or even 800 can penetrate deeper. Once, once there is, there is RPE, you, you, you get some kind of, not shadowing, but less penetration. But the, the shadowing effect you were talking about, there should be a very strong reflex. So I don't know what constituents these this cars have, but in principle, you're right. But 1060, we should be less sensitive. Can I ask you a question, Dr. Wolfgang Drexler? Is if we take a, the, like a slab image at the level of the RPE, the structural OCT image, that will have some variation in illumination caused by this overlying scattering, I would think. It would be decreased, maybe, at some areas where this is the overlying areas bright. If we could take that, the value of that, and divide it into the OCTA image from the Coria capillaris, and that should compensate for any decrease in illumination arriving at the Coria capillaris. You, you should not ask me about the visualization of RP and OCT, no matter which wavelength. Think of a biological self. RP is a single cell layer. It should be much, much thinner. What we see in OCT, no matter with which wavelength, is too thick. No, no, I'm not, that's not the yeah, point. But, but my point. We're compensating point. for the difference in, in illumination coming through the retina. Yes. By taking a slab at the RP. We can't take a slab really at the Coria capillaris. We have to take it right above that to get the idea of how much illumination is eventually getting down below that. But that's, if, if you want to measure the illumination, how to get on, it really depends on how you focus there, how to, how to interior segment, how to turn media. So you could do this, but it's not very quantitatively, but I, wanted, but I wanted to state again is here, the RPE in OCT is a much too thick layer. This is some kind of a, a multiple scattering uh, absorption artifact because it should be a single cell layer. And when you measure it, when you look at it, it's much too thick. So what we see in OCT as the RPE layer is something more than that, or some kind of optical artifact of OCT, which is still after 25 years, not clear to me at least. Thank you. Any other question, please? That's My fine. question is to you, Dr. Hairalla. Your presentation was so great, this new finding in the multiple evanescent dot syndrome about the ischemia. But my question is, didn't you look at the disc by OCTA? Because we all know that we have a, a, a kind of neuropathy over there. Was it edema because of the enlarged blind spot? Is it inflammation? So it would give us a better or more ideas about what is going on at the perfusion, at the optic disc in the same time with the uh, choroidal ischemia. Didn't you look no, at the... We, uh, unfortunately, we didn't look at the, uh, the optic disc, but I, as you can see, in, OC, in ICG and geography, uh, in mutes, you have uh, a hypo peripapillary hypofluorescence. Uh, yes. Uh, fluorescence, uh, and this could be uh, a peripapillary inf inflammation of the... Uh, the, the uh, but would it be interesting in yeah, seeing I that think, with OCTA, be... finding out what's going on at the, the level of the peripapillary plexus, probably. Yes. Thank you. Any other question? I, I have a question to, mm. uh, to, uh, to Olga. Uh, I agree that uh, swept source OCT is very useful in the, uh, the diagnosis and uh, monitoring response to treatment in VKH disease. Mm -hmm. But I think that uh, this, uh, it's, it's very important in, uh, for the, uh, in, the, in the short term because we, we have some patients with a normal uh, choroidal thickness uh, and uh, subclinical uh, inflammation that uh, can be only detected on ICG and geography. So I don't think that 
OCT can replace completely ICG angiography. We still need, I think, ICG angiography, not for the diagnosis of acute Voktkoyana Giala disease. I agree mm -hmm. that the diagnosis of VKH can be made on, uh, on the basis of clinical findings, uh, OCT, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, fluorescent angiography. We don't need uh, ICG for the diagnosis for at least in typical situations. Sometimes in atypical cases, ICG may be useful for the diagnosis. However, ICG still remains important for detecting uh, persistent or uh, recurrent choroidal inflammation in a patient with acute, with VKH mm -hmm. and uh, a normal clinical findings and a normal uh, OCT uh, findings. Well, in my experience, I have had more uh, diagnosis of posterior relapses thanks to SHEP source OCT than with ICGA because ICGA for, is difficult to interpret. No? You must have a lot of experience. If you uh, have the, the same ICGA and show to different experts, some of them will say there is inflammation and there are no, it's, it's subjective. And OCT is objective. If it is the thickness, you have the thickness before and after no? of the same patient. You can see if there is changes in, in the thickness of this patient. So I think it's better and more objective, the OCT, than the ICGA. Because ICGA sometimes is difficult to say if there is as a, a little bit of inflammation or not. For, at least for me, and I have had a lot of years with, with uh, IBT, so for me it's more objective, it's, more, it's easier to diagnose if there is inflammation or not compared with the ICGA. I don't know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other uh, question? It's okay. Uh, so the session is uh, closed, and I, uh, it's my pleasure to invite Professor Amin Tadayoni for the next uh, session on diabetic uh, retinopathy and other vascular diseases. Okay.